Get something you hear or see. Get connected. Don't be scared to try. What, where, when, why? My name is Ruth, and on today's show, I'm joined by the winners of this year's Wide World Sandwich Making Contest. They are Nikki, Spats, and Mr. P, better known to you and me as the Happy Gang. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Hello. Now, I understand that this is the third year running that you've won this competition. That's right, Ruth. We could hardly believe it. So, what's your secret? How do you go about making these brilliant award-winning sandwiches? Well, I think it's because that in Spats, we have a team leader who really understands the importance of good, fresh ingredients. I agree. Spats has taught me everything I know about food. I used to think that food comes from shops, but I know better now. But food does come from shops. Ah, yes, but where do the shops get it from? I wonder if your listeners realise the, the time and the effort and the expertise that goes into, into growing and making food that you can sell in shops. This whole sandwich-making experience has been a real eye-opener for me. Oh, you obviously feel very strongly about this, Mr P. I do, Ruth, I do. Steady, Mr P. Well, we'll talk more in a minute, but for now, let's hear the latest hit from The Happy Gang. Shops in town from the farmer's ground From the earth and animals all across the land Food is bad Food is bad Ah, top song. I'm starting to understand what you're getting at now, Happy Gang. Now, time to go to the phones. And if you'd like to put your headphones on, we have a caller on line one with a question. Hello, Uzma, you're through to the Happy Gang. Thank you, Ruth. My question's for Spats. Hi, Uzma. Hello, Spats. What kind of bread did you use and where did you buy it? Well, the choice of bread is very important in a competition like this, so I decided that Nikki should make our bread. I was a little bit nervous at first, Uzma, but it was great fun and it turned out really well. I love making bread. The first thing you do is measure out the flour. It's really important that you get the right amount. These old scales belong to my grandmother. Now for my secret ingredient, the oatmeal. You have to be careful with it. Too much and my bread might not work out but just the right amount will give my bread a wonderful flavour. Next, we add the yeast. This is very important. Without it, my bread won't rise. A little salt into the warm water and then add this to the dry ingredients. Now for the squelchy bit. With your hands, blend the ingredients into a dough and then turn out onto a work surface. Knead gently until the dough is springy to the touch. It might take 10 minutes or more. Put it back into the bowl and leave in a warm place until it has risen and doubled in size. It's the yeast that does that. Then you knead it all over again. You shape it and then you pop it in a loaf tin. Place it in a hot oven and around 40 minutes later, you'll have a lovely homemade loaf. But be careful you don't burn yourself. you to make the bread? Almost a year. A year? Let me explain. It all started one day last year. It was a lovely dry autumn day and Mr McDonald, the farmer, was working in his field and I wanted to say hello and find out if he was responsible for a nasty pong that was in the air. Something very smelly was being sprayed from the back of his tractor. He told me he was getting the field ready to plant wheat. Today he was muck spreading. The muck or manure would help his wheat grow. Whew, I couldn't stay long. 
Manure puts nutrients back into the soil. And nutrients help crops, like wheat, to grow. The field's very near our house, so we were able to watch all that happened next. That same October week, Mr MacDonald ploughed the field. The plough is a special tool that cuts into the ground, breaking up the hard earth as it's pulled along by the tractor. With the soil broken and soft, the farmer sows the wheat seeds. After less than a week in the ground, the seeds, swollen with water absorbed from the soil, crack open. This allows roots to push their way down into the rich earth and a tiny shoot to push its way up towards the autumn sunlight. By the time winter sets in, the wheat plant is well established and even during the cold winter months the roots continue to grow. As soon as the snow and frost melt, the wheat plant is ready to take full advantage of the warmer spring weather. We watched our field change dramatically between the months of March and July. And by the end of August, the green shoots had ripened and we could clearly see the grain in the ears of wheat. And so could the birds. Yeah, look, the farmer's put up a scarecrow. Yep, that's to frighten the birds away and stop them eating all the wheat. <gasps> Let's go and have a look. It's broken. Oh no. The birds will eat all the wheat. There won't be any left for the farmer to harvest. I have an idea. Why don't you two go and get another pole? I'll stay here and scare off the birds. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea, Nicky. Hope I didn't scare you. So, on a fine September afternoon, 11 months from that day back in October when I saw the farmer spreading the field with muck, we watched as he harvested his wheat field. The grain from our field was taken by lorry to a huge mill near Edinburgh. Mr MacDonald, the farmer, organised a visit to the mill for us and I got some excellent flour to make my prize winning bread. And you said the mill crushed the wheat into flour? Yes. I've got some here. Would you like to see it? Oh, yeah. Oh, it smells wonderful. The only trouble is, it makes me want to sneeze. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ruth. Uh, time for some music, I think. <sighs> And the stores we know And we buy our rolls and our loaves And home we go Bread is bad Bread is bad Bread is bad <sighs> Mr P, Mr P, how did they crush the wheat? Eh, uh, I don't know, Uzma It was all controlled by computers And done with big machines see what was going on. I can tell you. I visited an old-fashioned mill. Things are much easier to see there. I wanted some Scots oats to add to my bread mixture. This mill had a beautiful water wheel driven by a steady stream of water from a nearby river. It supplied power to all the machinery in the mill. Hello, George. Hello, Nicky. Nice to see you. Come on, Thanks. The 
the oats are kept dry in a big storeroom. They're carried up by a conveyor belt to this machine. It shakes out any stones that have accidentally been mixed up with the oats. George then explained that the oats had to have their hard outer shell removed before you could start milling. The shelling hopper does that job. Once the shells are removed, the oats are crushed by a massive millstone which grinds the oats as it turns. George adjusts the position of the millstone to increase the pressure on the oats. The oats are milled again and again until the miller is satisfied that the oatmeal is ready. Then it's filled into bags and sold. Here you are, Mickey. Good luck with your competition. Thanks very much. Cheerio! Cheerio! Well, it cuts very well. And it smells great. Yeah. Help yourselves. Mmm. Oh. It's delicious. And there's something... Yeah, there's something... Mm. Uh, oats. That's right. That'll be the handful of oats added to the dough. Ah. And is that what gives it the very dark colour? That's right, Mr P. Oh, the texture's great too. In fact, it's perfect texture for sandwiches. Yeah. You don't think it's too salty, do you? No, it's just right. Let's try it with some butter. Mmm. Mmm. Don't like the butter. Mmm. Where did you get this butter? At the supermarket. I think we could get better butter than this. I'll get some jam. Yeah. And the stores we know And we buy our rolls and our loaves And home we go Red is bad Red is bad Red is bad Amazing! So it really does take a whole year to grow and make your own bread. It's very hard work. Does that answer your question, Uzma? Yes, thank you. Oh, you must have been so pleased to get finished, Nikki. Chance to put your feet up and have a rest? Well, actually, the bread and jam are rather too good. This bread will be just perfect for the competition. Mmm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Don't worry. I'll bake some more. Yeah! Great! If you truly your city is affected by something you hear or see, get connected, don't be scared to try.